Hi everyone, welcome to Medicine for Dummies. I'm Dr. V. In my channel, I talk about all kinds of interesting topics for medical and nursing students. Most of these videos will be things that will be asked in your exams as multiple choice questions, structured essay questions, case discussions, and viva. So hit a like, subscribe, and share, and stick around for more as we talk about a new topic every week. I also have a YouTube channel for meditation and relaxation, and it provides you with great music for relaxing, studying, and memory enhancement. You can also find guided relaxation and meditation videos in case you're under stress these days and looking for some stress relief. Did you know that you can simulate brain waves by music to enhance your various functions in your brain? Cool, right? <laughs> if you're interested, check it out right here. So today, we are starting a series of pediatric case discussions. The series is a bit advanced and I recommend them if you are in the third, fourth or final years of medical school. As you know, pediatrics is a tricky subject because we are dealing with kids so we can't afford to make a mistake. In this series, we will be learning about a few cases that are commonly seen in wards and are likely to come for your exam. I will be giving you an overview of how to take a history from these patients, what points you should focus on in the examination, the investigations you should do, and the theory for the discussion and viva. Each topic comes in a few short videos, so you can get everything you need in one sitting and it will help you retain better. So some topics might come in three or four parts. This will be fun, interesting, and packed with information that has been compacted just for you guys. If you have any requests on other topics you would like me to do, just comment below and let me know. So, let's get started. Today, our topic is acute gastroenteritis. Acute means of sudden onset. Gastro means relating to the stomach. Entero means relating to the intestines, and itis means inflammation. So basically, it means a sudden inflammation in your gut or gastrointestinal tract. Simply, it's what we call an upset stomach. This is really common case in wards, and we see at least three or four per week. But this happens to be one of the easiest cases if you get it in your final exam. Let's consider a patient. This patient presented with 10 episodes of watery diarrhea. So the mother says that the baby appears lethargic, meaning that he isn't very active, and he refuses oral feeds. And also, just at the outset, the mother mentions that there were several episodes before and that they have multiple social problems. So, how do we take a history to identify the problems this patient has? I will be doing a detailed video on how to take a history of a pediatric patient. So if you are unfamiliar with the basics of history taking, you can first listen to that video and come back. So we must take a focused history. The first thing to mention in history is the introduction to the patient. Identification by the patient's name, age, sex, hometown, and any other relevant details. Then, if the child is small, you can mention from whom you obtain the history from, usually the mother. Additionally, you can mention if the patient was transferred or is this a direct admission, just to get an idea if the patient has been treated before. So after we correctly identify the patient, we mention the presenting complaint what the patient came with. So in this case, it is 10 episodes of watery diarrhea for two days. Then we move on to the most important part of the history, which is the history of the presenting complaint. So this has several components. We first have to describe the diarrhea. So you must be wondering what could be possibly say about diarrhea other than its feces with altered consistency, right? 
But actually, there are a lot of things you can describe about the diarrhea that will help you to diagnose how it was caused. So, from the mother, you ask about the amount of diarrhea. Was it only a little or was it profuse? How much was the volume approximately? What was the content? Did it have undigested food particles? How frequently did the child get it? That means per day, how many episodes did he have? Then ask if there was any mucus or blood mixed with the stools. We'll consider why later. And then ask if there were any other associated features, especially in an older child. We can ask about abdominal pain and tenesmus, meaning a painful recurrent need to evacuate bowel. Then, after we get a good idea about the characteristics of the diarrhea, we have to describe what happened to these features over time. This is especially important for long-standing conditions, but nevertheless, you should mention how these symptoms progressed. You can describe this like a story with a timeline so that the person listening to your history can picture what happened to the child with time. Then, we have to ask some questions to exclude the differential diagnoses. Differential diagnoses are the list of conditions that can explain or cause the particular features the patient has. So for this patient with diarrhea, the causes could be acute gastroenteritis, the topic we are talking today. It could be lactose intolerance, meaning the inability to digest dairy products. Especially in children, diarrhea can be due to conditions that we don't even think about, like meningitis and urinary tract infections. It could also be due to ear infections, sore throat, or tonsillitis, inflammatory bowel disease, and pancreatitis. Intussusception is a condition where one segment of your bowel telescopes inside another part of your bowel, giving rise to a reduction in blood supply to the intestine. So that could be a cause too. It can also be other things like certain drugs and even simple things like overfeeding. So diarrhea could be due to any of these conditions. So how can we differentiate each of these causes from one another? That is where our description of the diarrhea comes in and the other symptoms of these conditions come in. For acute gastroenteritis, there is usually abdominal pain. Lactose intolerance, you can ask if the patient recently had any dairy products to eat. For meningitis, you can ask if the patient has a headache. If it is a really small baby, like this one, you can ask if the baby had any seizures or about the baby's conscious level or something else that the baby will show that the mother may take notice of. To exclude urinary tract infections, we can ask if the baby's urinary frequency had increased or if the baby cried during passing urine. The technical term for this is micturition. Then, for ear infections, we can ask if there were any ear discharges that the mother noticed, or if it's an older child, we can ask if he complained of ear ache. Tonsillitis, we can ask if the baby complained of a sore throat. And for inflammatory bowel disease, we can ask if there were extra intestinal manifestations, meaning symptoms not related to the intestines, like joint pain and red eye. In intussusception, the classical feature is stools mixed with blood that looks a bit like red currant jelly, so it's known as red currant jelly stools. Finally, you can ask about any drugs the baby's on and the baby's feeding habits. So by asking all these questions, you can pinpoint what the condition or diagnosis is. So today, because we are considering acute gastroenteritis, let's just say that the baby doesn't have any other features that we asked about. So what's next? Now that we have come to a diagnosis, the rest of the history should be focused on that diagnosis because the problems of the patient doesn't end at the diagnosis. 
we have to find out why the patient is having these recurrent diarrheal episodes. So we ask about risk factors for developing diarrhea like if the baby had recently taken food from outside and about the hygiene of the baby and about food preparation. You can ask any other risk factors you could think of as well. Next is to identify the complications due to this diarrhea. As you know, in diarrhea, along with the frequent passing of stool, a lot of water can also be lost. So if the intake is not sufficient, the baby can go into dehydration, meaning that the body has lost a significant amount of water to the point where it is harmful. This can progress into shock where it could lead to death. You can ask about these features by asking again about the conscious level, if the baby feels cold, and the baby's activity level. And then another complication that the patient may get is sepsis, meaning severe infection, because ultimately itis means inflammation, which is caused by infections. So we can ask about features of sepsis like fever. Then there is another condition that can occur called hemolytic uremic syndrome, which we will be talking about in a little while, where in some cases of diarrhea with certain organisms, your red cells may break down rapidly, causing hemolysis, and your kidneys can be affected. So you can ask if the baby's eyes began to turn yellowish due to all the bilirubin that is accumulated, or if the baby's urine output reduced. Then there can be secondary lactose intolerance, which we will talk about, and electrolyte imbalance. Especially, electrolyte imbalances can be deadly and include the brain and heart and other organs. So you can ask if the patient had any palpitations or other features. In a small child, obviously you can't ask that and you can gain an idea through investigations. So now that you identified the breadth of the problem the patient has, the next thing is to describe how this condition has affected the patient's life. So you can ask how the baby's feeding is, how his urine output, activity level, sleep, and in a school-going child about his education as well. Then describe any special things that happened after admission. A lot of parents won't know exactly what happened, but may have some idea about what was done to the child. Did you collect urine to a bottle for culture? Was the baby given fluid through a cannula and was the baby given antibiotics? Was a lumbar puncture done? These things the parents may know, and even if they don't know the technical terms, they may know the procedure if you know the correct way to ask it. For example, if it's a lumbar puncture, you can ask if a needle was advanced into the spine and a fluid was obtained. So, the point of asking this component is to get an idea on how to help the child and to address the other parts of his life that are affected and to understand what has been done so far for the child. As a student, by understanding this, you can see if the doctors also thought in the line of your thinking or are they thinking about something else. You can end your history of presenting complaint by asking how the patient is feeling now to get an idea if the treatment that has been given is working or not. So, by the end of this part, you will have a really broad idea about the patient's main problem, how severe it is, and from top to bottom, how it has affected the child. So, the other parts of your history are focused to identify any other problem the patient may have because ultimately, we are not treating the disease, we are treating the patient, and that means holistic care. We complete the history with details of the antenatal period, birth, postnatal period, the child's growth, development, past medical and surgical history, family history to see if any genetic diseases causing diarrhea are seen in the family, and drug and allergic history. There are three other components we always focus on specifically in this history. 
The first of the three is immunization. So ask if the immunization is up to date and if the child has gotten the rotavirus vaccine. You will understand why we are specifically asking that question in later videos. The second of the three is a dietary history. We have to take a detailed dietary history with a 24-hour dietary recall to see what the child ate and if there were things that could have caused the diarrhea. The last part is the social history. We have to finish our history by describing the patient's social circumstances. Apart from the basic things like what the parents do, how is their socioeconomic status, and details about the other family members, we should specifically focus on the family's personal hygiene and ask whether they wash hands after going to the bathroom, how they prepare their meals about food safety, and especially in rural areas where the toilet pits are located and their distance from the water source. We also have to talk about the dietary habits and level of education of parents. Some of these questions may be considered offensive in some cultures, so make sure to implement according to your country or region. The reason why we ask all these things are to provide support to the patient and to understand the level at which we should educate the patient and parents. We should end by asking the parents ideas, concerns, and expectations. The mnemonic is ICE. And that can help understand better on how to help them. So that is the thorough, detailed history we need to take from the patient in order to understand the medical, social, and psychological problems the patient or the parents may have. We will be talking about how to do the examination and how to investigate a patient with acute gastroenteritis in the next video. Thanks for watching!